Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to be covering group buys in Pandas Python. I'm gonna be diving deep into the group buy concept, so there's gonna be a lot to cover, and because of that, I'm gonna be splitting this video out into two parts. So in this video, I'll simply introduce what a group buy is, go through a few examples, and then in the next video, I'll go through more complicated examples. I'll cover some complicated functions and aggregations you can use with group buys. That video and those concepts will take a little bit longer to explain. So that's the reason why I have to split it across multiple videos. It's best if you follow along with me and run the code when I run the code. So I have this Python notebook that's open right now in the, in the link below. So you can download that and run it on either Jupyter Notebooks or Google Colabs. I have it open in Google Colabs. I even have a few notebooks in the link below where you can go through a few extra exercises just to get the concept reinforced in your mind. Um, I also have solutions uh, posted as well. All right, so let's just get started. So this right here is just a quick rendering hack. We're not gonna need this for this video. Uh, basically, all it really does is it's a function that will allow you to print several things side by side just so that it's easier and more aesthetically pleasing to look at output. So this will always be there. You don't actually have to do anything except run this code block. And then anytime you want to print out something, you can use this function. So we'll let that run. All right. So... There's a bunch of text here. I won't really go over it um, verbatim. I, I'm going to gloss over it or I'm going to talk about a lot of the concepts, but this is really just for you uh, to have as reference if you need to understand like what's going on in these. So this right here is just a quick rendering hack. We're not going to need this for this video. Uh, basically, all it really does is it's a function that will allow you to print several things side by side just so that it's easier and more aesthetically pleasing to look at output. So this will always be there. You don't actually have to do anything except run this code block. And then anytime you want to print out something, you can use this function. So we'll let that run. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to import a NumPy oops, as NP and import pandas as PD. So these are the two libraries we're going to need. And then what I like to do is I like to pull all the data in the beginning so that I don't have to worry about it now. We're not going to really need the data, this data until the second example, but I'm just gonna pull it now so that I have it when it when I need it. So this is going to be a data set from the Seaborn library. Let's see how big this library is. So it is 1,035 rows and six columns, right? And so if I wanna just see what that looks like, we're gonna use the head function to give us the first five rows and we see what you know the first five rows worth of data looks like. All right, so we're gonna use this later on. Let's actually dive into just, just creating a uh, a data frame and then and then using a group by just to see what it what it looks like so I'm gonna create a data frame from scratch using the pandas library okay so now I have a data frame with two columns a key column and a data column this data column is just zero to five and this key column has actually only three keys they're just duplicated so now let's introduce the group by concept. What we want to do here is make this key column unique. We want to actually collapse them together so that there's only one A, one B, and one C, right? And so that's the point of a group by. It collapses uh, data together and aggregate 
the, the numerical values in whichever way you want to aggregate them together. All right, so let's actually, it's, so it's a two-step process. The first one is actually aggregating them and collapsing the data together. And then the second step is adding some sort of, you know, mathematical operation, some mathematical aggregation to the data. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna specify what categorical you know, column, what categorical variable we want to group by. So we're gonna take the data frame variable, apply the group by function, and then inside this parentheses, we're gonna put in the categorical variable that we wanna group by. So that's gonna be our key column, all right? And so if we run this line of code, we don't actually get anything, we get uh, just an object. What that means is it's just ready for us to you know, apply an aggregation to the numerical data. So that's actually gonna be our second step. So if we have it by key here, what can we do next? We can apply an aggregation as easily as just typing dot sum so it it's because it's only you know two rows i mean sorry it's only two columns and we're specifying one column here the only other column is this data column so python knows to apply the sum operation to this column here and so if we do that we ha we see this aggregation so we see that you know, the math works out. So for A, it's zero plus three. For B, it's one plus four, which is five. And then for C, it's two plus seven, uh, two plus five, which is seven. So that. So with our second example, we're gonna use the planet's data set. So just to take a look at what that data set looks like, I'm going to call the planet's data frame and take a look at the first five rows of data. So it looks like we have one categorical column, one categorical variable, and then we have five numerical columns, five numerical variables. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna group by this first column, the methods column. So I'm gonna collapse the categorical you know, categories in this, in this column. So what I'm gonna do, just like the previous example, is I'm gonna first grab the data set and apply the group by function. And then within this group by, I'm gonna explicitly type uh, the method column so that I know that this is the categorical variable that I wanna collapse. So obviously, just like the example above, if I execute this line of code, you know, nothing really shows up except an object display. So if I run, just like this, the, the example above, if I run like, a, say like a median or yeah, a median aggregation on top of it, it's gonna basically give me the median of all of the other columns, right? And so I may or may not really want that because I, don't, I might not really care about the median of say the year or median of this number. So what I can also do is I'll delete this and instead it, I'll, I'll put in a bracket and just type in a, a category or a column that I care about, like a numerical column that I care about. In this case, I wanna get the median of the orbital period. And so what I can do is type in orbital period here, right, and then execute this line of code, it's going to give me an object again, which is what I'm expecting. But basically, what I want to show is, I am explicitly calling out this, this numerical column here. So I have the categorical column that I want to collapse. And then I have a, a numerical column where I want some sort of mathematical aggregation to to be applied to this column. So because of that, I can, uh, I can finally uh, put in an aggregation, which I'm going to put in below here. I'm going to put in a median aggregation. And that's going to give me basically 
all the different categories in the method column and then the median orbital period for each method. So that is exactly what we want and just a little bit more of a complex example uh, of a group by.